How's it going? Necrotic Nick, Thralls Metal again, and I'm gonna do another collection update because I keep buying music. Who knew? Alright, let's get into this shit. First we have Tomb Stalker, Black Crusades. Uh, this is a really interesting mix of a couple of different things. It's definitely death and thrash metal, but it's Swedish death metal thrown in with thrash metal. It definitely has a strong thrash vibe, but it has that nasty, nasty distortion associated with Swedish death metal. Sometimes it's a bit too much, like it kind of crackles and hisses a little bit too much, and you kind of lose like some of the melodies that are buried in that distortion. But all in all, it's a pretty solid album. Uh, I especially like the song Plague Father. I thought that one was a really, really strong one. Um, good stuff. It was out on uh, Shadow Kingdom Records. Came out in 2015. I think this is their only full length. Check it out. It's a pretty solid listen. Vomitory. Redemption. Uh, this is the Metal Blade reissue from this year, I believe. All right, or maybe last year. Could be wrong. I am wrong. <laughs> um, I think this is the German version, or at least the European version. This is the reissue of their second album, and it also includes their 10-inch picture disc EP that came out forever ago, and I think has been out of print since. Awesome stuff. This is just fast, gnarly, disgusting death metal. I fucking love Vomitory. I can't wait to fucking see them at Maryland Death Fest. That was one of the huge pulls for me going this year. I was like, dude, I've loved these guys for a while, and you know they've been broken up for a while. They formed Cut Up, which was good, but it wasn't vomitory. This this is this is gonna be awesome hearing songs from this live. I hope they fucking play it because this album is killer from start to finish. I love the energy on this. It stays fast and furious and ugly the entire time. Jam the shit out of this. Uh, Periphery, Hail Stan or Periphery Four Hail Stan. Uh. I love the music on this. I really do. I think Misha Mansoor and the other two guitarists whose names escape me at this point are solid writers. They really write really cool melodies and very strong. Like it's it's genty, but at the same time it you know harks back to like some Nevermore-ish stuff. So definitely some Jeff Loomis stuff and uh, definitely Dream Theaters in there. The thing that drives me nuts about this band is the singer. I can't take his vocals. Oh my god, they're grating. They, they made this listen a chore, and it shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have been, because the music's fine. The only song I thought actually fit the vocals was It's Only Smiles, because it sounds like something a token warp Tour band would throw out as a radio single. It's It just... It reminds me of, like, you know, the 2000... The early 2000s, like kind of emo post hardcore push like victory records was throwing out everything like that and they had those uber high vocals that were real squealy and uh, i just i can't do it i can't do his vocals if this was an instrumental i would have loved the shit out of it but you know if you're into that definitely check them out i mean i'm sure a lot of people know who periphery are check them out that's just my opinion Incantation, Upon the Throne of the Apocalypse. This is the new reissue of the demos that would become Immortal Throne of the Nazarene, which would came out in 1994. Uh, this is awesome. I mean, I pretty much already, I own Immortal Throne of the Nazarene. I fucking love that album. It's really cool here in the more raw versions of this. Like, this is just a straight up demo. These versions are much harsher sounding, and they have that awesome jammed in studio feel like it feels like just like a private live show almost this is exactly what you get live right here it's just gnarly it just beats the shit out of you and it's awesome fucking love incantation one of my favorite death metal bands they continue to be awesome and i can't wait for an actual new studio album from them. fractal universe and this is Rhizomes of Insanity. This is really good kind of melodic tech death. It's not like melodic tech death in the sense like uh, Elegians is. This isn't all 4-4 four, four time. Uh, there's a lot of 
real techy like polyrhythms in there really interesting guitar work it's it's definitely genty but you feel like echoes of uh even bands like necrophage just popped in here and there's, there's cool melodic passages in there there's even some clean vocals you even have these ah, got these these weird kind of like little chanty light vocals that come in and it, it's strange it kind of reminds me of like stuff like yes and gentle giant which is definitely not metal but a huge influence on prog um really really good i just i just really dig this um the opening track oneric realizations fantastic that pretty much just sets the pace for the entire album it just gives you what you're going to get throughout uh and pretty much stays the course in that there are a couple songs i didn't get into because uh, sometimes they kind of missed the mark on the chorus but for the most part, you're just being dazzled by really intricate technical play, but it's also melodic and catchy, which is that perfect balance I try to look for in tech metal. Good release. I gotta check out more of this stuff. Apparently, I think they have another album. I'm gonna have to check it out. Fatal Curse. Breaking the Trance. This is a throwback heavy metal band, like very much in the vein of like, Iron Maiden, or uh, Angel Witch, or even more recent acts like Enforcer. Um, really good music, I dig it. It like it has that old school heavy metal feel, strong riffs, really cool lead melodies. Uh, the one thing it's kind of missing is the vocals. They're really not powerful enough to carry the music itself. Uh, generally, when I when I look for like a classic heavy metal sound, they have to have that vocalist that. Who's, you know, whose vocals soar above the music. These vocals kind of just hover. Uh, they sound real strained at certain points, especially when they're trying to deliver like a real powerful chorus. It just kind of misses the mark. Musically though, these guys are tight. I, I mean, you know, who knows over the time, this guy might improve vocally, but right now, eh, it's, it's okay. I guess it's serviceable. Musically though, check them out. Really good stuff. Dead to a Dying World, Elegy. This came out on Profound Lore this year, and this is this is quite a head fuck in terms of describing it. It's blackened sludge, but definitely bits of post metal. It also includes a lot of uh, strings and orchestral elements. They have a violinist in this, I believe a celloist too. Uh, multiple vocalists, I think a male and a female. It's really just this dense layered sound and man, they definitely get that doomy atmosphere too because it's definitely parts doom in here. Uh, I would not listen to this when I'm depressed because this music is sullen as fuck. It doesn't really matter what they're singing about, it just feels oppressive. But it's really good and really well written. It has some real like kind of atmospheric moments. Eh, maybe bordering on shoegazy in some parts. Kind of remind me of Alcest, but it didn't labor that point for too long like, you know, uh, shoegaze or black gaze bands do. Really solid writing on this. I dig this. I'm definitely going to have to jam it more. Just, you know, not, not when I want to feel happy. Damnation Hammer. Uh, I picked this up on a whim at uh, a record store, No Noise Records. And uh, it's, it's an interesting mix of different things. It definitely has sludge metal. Uh, parts that, like, riff-wise, it definitely reminds me of Crowbar in parts, which, you know, Kurt Winstein is an incredible riff guy. You know, always has been. Uh, and then it also has, like, like almost candle mass like moments, so you get a little bit more of that traditional, like, epic doom sound. What misses, again, unfortunately, kind of a theme, is the vocals on this, because it just sounds like he's just saying whatever comes to his mind. The, the cadences don't stick in your mind. You know, they seem almost improvised. And that kind of drives me nuts because you want to get in, you know, while you're in the rhythm of a song, like a good chunky riff, you're banging your head, you kind of want to have a vocal part that goes with it. And it just often misses the mark. And, you know, some of the choruses don't really deliver a big punch, like an anthemic punch you want to sing along with. But once again, riff-wise, Jesus Christ, these guys are good. Uh, tons of heavy, heavy, chunky riffs left and right. Like I said, that, that fierce um, crowbar vibe kept me going through it. 
Uh, I'm going to give it more listens, but so far it's it's okay. I, I dig it, but it's missing some pieces to really get me into it. This is Crucimentum, or Cruciamentum. I think it's Cruciamentum. Uh, this is a band from Scotland, or I think the Midlands. I don't know, it was kind of vague on uh, uh, Encyclopedia Metal in terms of where they were from, but I know they were awesome old school death metal. This is an EP that came out on Nuclear Winter Records. Really good, start to finish. Like, most of the songs are pretty long on this, so you definitely get, you know, a, a very full album out of this EP. Really awesome, like, it's kind of death doomy in parts. It really reminds me of a lot of, like, Finnish death metal bands, like uh, Frontalith or um, Gorophilia. Um, definitely has a lot of that, and it just such heavy dense atmosphere uh, the vocals are very much on par with a band like two mold so you're gonna get that big cavernous howl that low roar really good stuff I love the writing in this it keeps that ugly atmosphere the entire time and I, I that's something I dig about like this newer wave of old-school death metal coming through like they really get that feeling you know you, you want it to sound dark and evil and grimy and I love that and it's also well produced too so you know they didn't just settle for a muddy production just to make it sound grimy they actually polished it and worked at it to make it sound grimy but so clear definitely dig it check out their full length too it's incredible monkey three sphere this is another band i picked up on a whim and wow i was blown away this is an instrumental band uh, from switzerland it is very much, I guess, I guess you'd call it stoner metal, but it's very psychedelic. There's lots of layered keyboards on this. Um, it definitely reminds me of, you know, it has echoes of Tool. There's Pink Floyd in here, even Hawkwind, except they don't sound like they were on a head, you know, full of acid in the studio, like they were focused and wanted to write some killer stuff. Awesome, layered, dense sound but also really catchy riffs throughout, really cool layered melodies. This is an awesome listen from start to finish. I dug the whole thing and I, I really just couldn't stop jamming it. Uh, lots of really cool, like David Gilmore-esque solos too, like not all about technical stuff. It's, it's just about the feel of it and kind of creating that, that atmosphere in the album. This is an incredible listen. I totally recommend checking this one out. It's amazing. All right, well, that'll do it for this one. Uh, if you like this, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, I will definitely catch you guys later.